Hello everyone, my name is Francesco Balocco. I'm a PhD student at Erasmus University. Today I present Tech Tax and its exchanges fees in display advertising. This paper is joint work with Yixin Lu from George Washington University and with my advisor Ting Li from Erasmus. In this paper, we study how a mechanism change in the programmatic advertising market impacts the incentives and the power balances between publishers and ad exchanges. In this slide, you can see a very simplified representation of the programmatic advertising auction supply chain. We can see on the left side a consumer who really likes hamburgers, and all the way to the right side, the two fast food chains that are interested in showing them an ad. When the consumer connects to a publisher's website, like for example the CNN one on this slide, the publisher sends a bid request through the supply chain. In this case, two advertisers are interested in buying the ad space and bid for it. The ad exchange here uh, in the middle acts as a third party auctioneer that facilitates the clearing of an impression. In reality, the demand for impressions is generally more scattered and publishers have to work together with multiple ad exchanges to ensure the allocation of their inventory. The mechanism that regulates the allocation to the different ad exchanges has radically changed in the past few years, going from the sequential waterfall to the parallel header bidding. Let's look at the difference. Before 2017, most of the publishers used an allocation mechanism called the waterfall. In the waterfall, publishers ranked their partner ad exchanges by expected revenue and contacted them one by one when an impression was available. If the bids in the current ad exchange were higher than the minimum bid set by the publishers, the impression would clear. Otherwise, the publisher would contact the next exchange down the line and lower the minimum bid. The process continued until the impression cleared or remained unsold. This method had a clear drawback from the publisher perspective, since advertisers with a higher valuation for an impression may never be contacted due to the position of their partner at exchange in the waterfall. For this reason, publishers moved to header bidding. In header bidding, publishers can submit a bid request to all their partner at exchange at once. Each ad exchange then runs an auction and the winning bid from each ad exchange participates in a further auction layer to decide the winner. Header bidding has a clear advantage for the publishers who now have access to all the valuations in the market and can choose the highest. Despite the mechanism change, publishers didn't get a major performance boost from header bidding where higher clearing prices didn't translate into higher profits for publishers. To understand why this happens, we study the business models in the programmatic supply chain. In this slide, I give a visual representation of the surplus of the programmatic advertising actors from an impression transaction. We begin with the advertiser who has a certain valuation for the impression. When the transaction clears, the advertiser transfers part of their valuation to the publisher as the clearing price from the auction. Finally, the ad exchange charges a service fee on both sides to compensate its facilitating role. In reality, however, buy-side and sell-side fees look way less symmetric than in our example representation. In the past years, the buy-side fees charged by advertising intermediaries have steadily declined, while sell-side fees have substantially increased. Some reports showed sell-side fees ranging all the way to 70% of the publisher's impression revenue. This fee burden on the sell side is often referred to as the tech tax and regarded as a serious threat to the sustainability of the advertising model for the publishers. While the topic of intermediary fees in programmatic advertising markets has received a significant amount of attention from practice, academic uh, research has so far substantially neglected the issue, as noted in the recent literature review by Choi and Mela. In our paper, we want to understand what are the incentives for ad exchanges when setting buy-side and sell-side fees under both the legacy waterfall mechanism and the newer header bidding, and how this translates into the welfare of advertisers and publishers. We do this by building an analytical model of the problem with one publisher, two competing ad exchanges, and two advertisers in each ad exchange. Because of the complexity of the problem, we complement our analysis with a learning agency simulation of the market, where advertisers and ad exchanges and the publisher all autonomously learn the equilibrium strategies. In the next few slides, I'll show you some preliminary results. 
First, in line with the current market situation, we find that ad exchanges always have an incentive to keep the buy side fees as low as possible. This is because advertisers shape their bids when they expect their surplus to be extracted, which leads to overall lower expected payments. In terms of sell side fees, we observe that under the waterfall mechanism, the ad exchanges can somehow trade off between buy side and sell side fees and have an incentive to keep the sell side fees under control to maintain higher positions in the waterfall ranking. You can clearly see this from the level curves of the expected revenue function of the ad exchange, where lighter color represent rev higher revenues. In header bidding, however, ad exchanges are always better off charging no fees on the buy side and obtaining all of their revenue from the sell side. Because here ad exchanges do not compete for a higher position in the waterfall any longer, they have no incentive to keep their fees under control, extracting larger and larger amounts of the publisher's surplus. So far, we were able to already draw some conclusions and understand better why publishers' profits are not increasing in header bidding despite their revenues are. In the future, we will be analyzing the revenue implication for both advertisers and ad exchanges, as well as relaxing some of the assumptions of our model and analyze how our results compare to a more realistic learning agent simulation.